Scleral indentation, sometimes also called scleral depression, is a technique utilized to better view the peripheral fundus. Even with maximal dilation of the iris, it can still be difficult to examine pars plana, ora serrata, and peripheral retina with a binocular indirect ophthalmoscope, or BIO. By indenting the sclera, the practitioner can displace peripheral structures inward, allowing for binocular stereoscopic views. Areas of the fundus can be seen from different angles by dynamically applying pressure or rolling the retina. It is important that anyone attempting scleral indentation first become proficient with obtaining peripheral retinal views with a BIO. Successful indentation technique is dependent on quality BIO views. Indications for scleral indentation would be situations where the practitioner would need to obtain difficult peripheral retinal views or better image a peripheral retinal structure. In particular, scleral indentation is indicated when a patient experiences the symptoms of acute photopsia and floaters. Overall, the most common purpose for scleral indentation is to rule out breaks or tears in the retina. It would also be recommended when a patient has a history of blunt force trauma, high myopia, aphakia, or peripheral retinal anomaly which we'll discuss in detail in upcoming videos. There are times when you would not want to scleral indent the retina. Contraindications to indentation would be penetrating retinal injury, ruptured globe, and hyphema. It is also not recommended to indent a patient who has had recent ocular surgery. You can indent a patient who has glaucoma. However, you will be pressing on the globe which temporarily increases the pressure inside the eye. So make sure the information needed outweighs the risks of spiking the patient's intraocular pressure. Although intraocular pressure increases, the pressure spike is not considered enough to enlarge retinal holes or tears. These types of retinal findings should be indented. Three pieces of equipment are necessary to perform scleral indentation a BIO, a 20 diopter or 30 diopter condensing lens, and an instrument for indentation. The type of indenters or depressors on the market can vary. One of the most common styles is the stylus. It can either have a T-bar rounded tip or a flat paddle edge. Another design is a thimble design, intended to fit on the end of a fingertip. The smaller the tip, the more concentrated the pressure. The most convex aspect of the indenter is the portion that will come into contact with the globe, or eyelid. In the event that the scleral indenter cannot be located, a sterile cotton tip applicator could also be used for the procedure. In addition to the equipment we've discussed, topical ophthalmic drops will also be necessary for the procedure. The patient will need to be fully dilated to view the peripheral fundus. First, we recommend a topical anesthetic, such as 0.5% preparacaine for comfort, followed by 1% trypicamide and 2.5% phenylephrine to achieve temporary dilation of the pupil. The drops will be at maximum effectivity about 30 minutes after installation. More topical anesthetic might be needed if on-the-globe technique is performed. No extra anesthesia is usually required for indentation over the eyelid. To begin this procedure, it is important that the patient is properly positioned. Recline the chair and have the patient lay back. It helps to have the patient's head at hip level to maintain proper working distance. Ensure that there is enough room for the doctor to move comfortably around the patient's head. You may have to turn the chair slightly if movement is restricted. Ensure that the patient's pupil is maximally dilated. It should not constrict to light. If the dilation is not full, consider adding more drops of topical tropicamide 1% and or phenylephrine 2.5%. You may also elect to wait a few more minutes to achieve full dilation. The BIO should be properly adjusted such that the area of interest in the fundus can be viewed. 
This means the doctor should place himself 180 degrees or directly across from the area of interest. The indenture should be held gently between the thumb and index finger like a pencil. We will go over indentation placement on the globe itself first. The indenture should be placed on the sclera about 1 to 1.5 centimeters behind the limbus. This technique can be preferred on patients with tighter eyelids. Placement of the indenture directly on the globe with topical anesthetic can be far more comfortable than excessive pressure on the exterior eyelid. Ensure that the proper side, the convex portion of the indenture, is facing the globe. Once the indenture is in place, the patient should be instructed to look slowly towards the indenture. The practitioner will move with the eye, staying that 1 to 1.5 centimeters past the limbus and burying the indenture until the tip can no longer be seen. Scleral indentation can also be performed over the eyelid. This method works well on geriatric patients with loose skin of the eyelids. It is also indicated when a patient has allergies to topical anesthesia that would prevent indentation on the globe itself. Ensure that the eyelids are clean and free of any makeup or lotions that might cause the indenture to slide. An alcohol swab or a commercial lid scrub can be used to clean the area prior to indentation. After cleaning, ensure that the eyelid is dry. If you are using an indenture with a curve, the curve should bend away from the eye and follow the contour of the face. This is to get the indenture out of the way, out of the field of view. The hand that should be used will depend on the area that needs to be viewed. Most views will allow for a dominant hand to hold the indenture, but the patient's anatomy may require the dominant hand to hold the condensing lens instead. We recommend practicing trading hands in the event that the non-dominant hand is not preferable. Each indentation will encompass one and a half clock hours of the retinal view. Keep this in mind as you examine the region of the retina in question. You may need to move the indenture side to side or up and down during the procedure in order to obtain a full dynamic view. To move to different clock hours, slide the indenture on flaccid eyelids or lift and reposition with tighter lids. Be sure to check the patient every couple of minutes to ensure correct position of gaze. It isn't uncommon for a patient's eye to roll downwards as pressure is directing the eye down. You may have to remind the patient to continue looking upward towards the forehead. Now we will be discussing some troubleshooting. If you have clear retina in view but no indentation, check alignment. It is common when first learning for the doctor's hand to fall sideways. This will cause the indenture to move off axis. Ensure that you are truly 180 degrees away from the view. If the view is blurred, then check the condensing lens placement. Pull back more with the lens. If the indenture appears to be in the way, readjust. If no adjustment can move the indenture, then it is wise to switch hands. If you see the indenture off to the side of the view, move the indenture slightly away from the area you want to see. This will move the view in the center of the condensing lens. This seems counterintuitive, but recall that images in the lens are reversed and inverted when compared to the true anatomy. If you obtain a good image and lose it, check your positioning first. It is common to move in toward the patient, particularly when an area of interest is found. Stay at arm's length and maintain head positioning 180 degrees from your view. Do not be afraid to move the patient's head. A prominent nose bridge or frontal bone might require the patient to turn the head or tilt the chin. The easiest views to obtain on the globe are the temporal, followed by superior, then nasal, 
and finally inferior. The patient should feel sensation, but should not be in pain during the procedure. Pain could be indicative of too much pressure. Indenting too far anterior or close to the limbus, or the indenture not truly being tangential to the globe, could cause pain. If the indentation is being performed on the sclera, there is risk of pinching a rectus muscle. If a patient feels pain, first let up on the pressure and then check alignment. Do not pull out of the eyelids too quickly at risk of injury to the patient's cornea. Remember that sensation is normal and that the patient's eye will be held open with indenture to obtain a view. This can cause the eye to dry out. We recommend having artificial tears available should the procedure extend longer than anticipated. Let's review the pros and cons of both techniques. Pros for the on the globe or sclera technique include that it can be used with any lid structure or flaccid eyelids, and that the eye is anesthetized limiting sensation. Pros for the over the eyelid technique include that there is no anesthesia required and there's less risk to the cornea. There are two cons to on the globe technique, which includes inducing a muscle spasm, which sometimes is known as a charley horse, if a rectus muscle is pinched, and there is also a need for anesthesia. There are also two cons to over the lid technique, which includes limitations of view and more pressure needed to obtain views on tighter lids. We recommend familiarity with both techniques in the event that one is not yielding the view or maximal comfort for the patient and doctor.